Today's Red State Update Parker sponsor Podcast. is Jiggy's Jiggy's Market. You can't be your own sponsor no. on the... Jicky, Jicky, not Jicky. Oh, Jicky's. Jicky's Market, yes, not sir. Not Jackie's Market. No. That's your store. That's my store, yeah. But that's still you Jiggy. doing Jicky's Market. That's your competition, ain't I it? I ain't my competition. You know, it's, I listen to what they got going on. It's, it's, I'm all for freedom. Everybody do what they want to do, and I got, they got a special going on this week. Jicky's Market's got... Uh, Every drink, every cold drink, every drink I got in there, 150 ounces. 150 ounces? 150 ounces, oh, yes, Damn, sir. that's a lot. How much is that? That's, that's like... It's 1.17 gallons. Every drink is 1.17 gallons. In the store, yes, sir. What if I want a medium? Uh, you want medium, you go up in New York, go talk to Bloomberg about your medium if you want one. That's, what oh. you, that's, what, that's all you can drink. You go in the Jackie's Market. So I support them. You, you right there are... Um, a, com- a competitor of mine, but you know I support freedom of what they're doing, and I, I believe in the cause, and it's pretty. They good. gave you twenty dollars. They did give me twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars, yes, sir. And uh, so as a, that's our show sponsor today, and I'm all for it. I, I would have done it myself, but I I tell you what, I ain't got the the space for those cups. I ain't got store space for it. Ain't nowhere. Where would you put? That's a lot. That's a lot. I ain't got the. I know. That's what I'm saying. I I support what he's doing, but I here at Jackie's store, no sir. You, we we uh, Jackie's market where we at now, where we talk from. Here you just you get a little drink. Little drinks all we got here. Yeah, you and then you charge people when they want a refill. Exactly. That's that's capitalism right there. So there's freedom and capitalism. They both go together. Take your choice. Go so to if, vote. If you want freedom. To support freedom and protest oppression, go to Jicky's Market. But if you're more interested in capitalism and and supporting small business, yeah. go to Jackie's and Market. I, I and get a little bitty drink. Get a little drink, yeah. And this ain't got nothing to do with Bloomberg telling me to do that. That's just you know that's capitalism. You pay. You, you but either way, Bloomberg is saying you can only get a small drink. You're saying you can only get a small drink, and Jicky. Is also saying you can only get a, a big drink. Ain't that all the same thing? People telling you how big your drink is? Well, some of store won't get involved. They can do it. That's just how it is here. I don't know. Oh, you think Jockey's Market might have a... I don't know if Jockey's going to do it or not. Here, Jackie's and Jackie's. Jackie's little drink. Jackie's is big drink. Jackie's is a big drink. That's, That's... a 1.17 gallon drink. Jackie's is a little bitty drink where he charge you for refills, and we don't know what Jockey's gonna I do. I wouldn't set a, I wouldn't set foot in that place, Jockey's. I wouldn't go where. If I was Jockey, why are you so mad at Jockey's? I don't like Jockey's Market, and that's a personal thing. I ain't gonna get onto it on here. But if you want to shop, you do your business there. You do it there. Don't come to well, Jackie's or Jickies. You just keep yourself at Jockey's. Well, Jickies ain't got gas. You don't have gas. Pump. I ain't got that's that's another reason not completely com- competitor. But, but Jockeys ain't got no gas, and he sells barbecue. Yeah. Well, I remember when that. he started that, you was mad. If at that's the what barbecue. you want to call it, what he makes. That's what he I ain't bad. I, I tell you what, if I was Jockeys, I'd say, hey, you thirsty? Let me give you a choice of cups. Well, go over to Jockeys and hell, you drink whatever you want. Just get, you want to do that, go over there and record this whole damn thing at Jockeys. Oh, Jockey, I can't understand. It's a sponsor on this show at Jackie's Market. It's Jickies. Jackie's is who got the big drinks, little drinks. Is it Jackie's? I don't even want to bring up a name of the other one again. I hate to be terrible on a podcast since they pulled all his teeth. I can't understand a word Jackie says. Hell. Other sponsor today is the Murfreesboro Play Actors Club. They got a new production coming up. Uh, they're holding auditions, so they give us some money to to advertise auditions. So if you got a you know, a acting bug or a strutting on stage bone in you. Yeah. Go down there. They're having auditions for their upcoming production of Who Left a Crumpet in the WC? It's a really mm. funny British uh, oh, Lord. sparse. I can't sit through it. I saw uh, Murphy play at the club. They did Sherlock Holmes. And I don't understand English accents halfway as it is, and then you got somebody from Tennessee trying to do a damn English accent. Sherlock Holmes, I didn't understand what the case was. I didn't know what he was doing. Couldn't understand a word nobody saying in that. Well, who left the crumpet in the WC? They already cast uh, the that pharmacist from Kroger, the Kroger pharmacist. Oh, yeah. 
So he can do a pretty good. He's English good accent. now. He can pull it off. Yeah, I'll go see him. But I guess I can tell you everybody around him. I don't know what he's saying. But now they wanted me to make sure everybody's clear. This is who left the crumpet in the WC, the hilarious uh, British farce and comedy of manners, not. Who left the mysterious crumpet in the WC, which is a drawing room mystery with oh, yeah. inspectors and uh, Harvard Yard, whatever that is. This one, like, funny, like, funny, Fraser. Maids. funny like, Fraser, like, English. Right, Fraser, exactly like, like, like Fraser. Yeah, English door. like yeah. Fraser. Yeah. Doors. They'll probably have some middle aged women in maid costumes like Fraser always did. I'd yell. But not who left the mysterious crumpet. That's more That's like, like Sherlock Holmes, like I was talking Somebody about murdered their wife. Yeah, they didn't have a lot of success with the Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if it's for the reasons you mentioned. Well, they, the Sherlock Holmes, that half of it didn't understand anybody saying it, and half of it was supposed to be audience participate. He'd like, did you say that? Or he'd ask the audience a question, and you don't know what he's asking you. So, so it, nobody would say nobody, it. Was it just, for kids? He'd repeat, I don't know. There's some children in there. Yeah, that what they found out was like if you can get people to attend community theater, you don't want to present them with a mystery because they're already trying to figure out why the hell they're there. Yeah. So they people like to laugh. That's the Murfreesboro yeah. Play Actors Club. I go see if pharmacy it and it's one of them funny if it's funny like Fraser, I, I, I yeah. You go see that. You won't not, but you won't go see. I tell you what, you should have gone to see. It was a goddamn Miss Horse hey, in the Luby's parking lot. That was that. pretty good. What? You he went didn't and have, that? Yeah, I went to see it. Well, I mean, I went to Luby's and they happened to be doing it. But I talked to the Luby's manager and he said, well, we can't put our name on this officially because of the blasphemy. But he said after the show, a lot of people went in there and loaded up at the buffet. I mean, I am. Well, and made some money off of it. I was excited to see it. I, I, you know, I heard I had a horse in it, and I knew I heard heard all about it. It's just the name of it. I can't see it. Well, I that think name if they change the name, and then of course you know, old Victor Miles. Miles, yes, and no, sir, I ain't changing the he name. He ain't gonna yeah. change the name. He didn't have the money to do the horse puppet the way he wanted to do yeah. it. But well, he, what uh, they do it? What they have out Luby's out front? Uh, they just he just threw something together, paper mache. Well, you look like a horse. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's all you need. They you got a, like a kid money. wearing an outfit. Oh, I am. But when they do it, when he gets the, when he gets the, what, like $250 million, he needs to build the horse suit or whatever it is. It's going to be like a team of puppeteers uh, from Belgium. And just, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, if it, that's his vision. I, I mean, it. he said, you know, I compromised on the horse for this run through, but he's going to do it again. He's getting the money. It's going to be a, Another run, he said he'd like to do one in an actual theater. He doesn't know if yeah. that's going to happen. Well, not around here with that name, no. But that's part of his vision. So hey, it's pretty good. Yeah, that horse. I couldn't hear, you know, traffic going by and stuff. And uh, I don't know. They might have had British accents. I really couldn't tell. But that, that kid with the paper mache horse head on, hey, he did a good job. Well, I'm surprised they had a good show. I'm glad about, you know. I just see if he changed the name, I'd be first one in line. I love a horse. Lord knows I love a horse. That kid got kicked out of his house, I heard, Victor Mileage. He's staying with Victor Mileage now. That's kind of a scandal. Why? Well, you know, the kid's parents are like, you can't be in a show with GD in it. So I'll go stay with Victor Mileage. And the boy with a horse ain't live with him now. Well, it was temporary. It ain't, it ain't like you think. I didn't say nothing. It just, you say theater. I just assume it's all like that. I'll be honest, but I didn't say It that. does seem pretty much like a teenager in a paper mache horse head living with a, a middle-aged director in a one-room oh, apartment. Sound. That's theater. I don't need that kind of theater around this town. I don't right, enough of that. Well, I give Victor Mileage a lot of free publicity on this damn show. Well. So to recap, our sponsors for this show are Jickey's Market. Jickey's Market, yeah. 150 ounces. Uh, have a drink. Ever drink, not Jackie's Market, Lil Bitty Drinks, no. or Jockey's Market. Don't even, I don't even want you to say Jockey. You say Jackie all you want, you say Jicky all you want. Don't say Jockey's. But Jicky's. Jicky's, 150 ounce. S- strike a blow for freedom. 1.17 gallons, join Sarah Palin in the fight and, and get you something to drink. And also, Murfreesboro Play Actors Club holding auditions for Who Left the Mysterious No. Damn it, I'm confused. Who left the crumpet in the WC? Not the mysterious one, yeah. Not who left the mysterious crumpet yeah. in there. That one's got murder in it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, intrigue, yeah. On with the podcast. Hey, look at there. You see him? Well, open your damn eyes in. It's the old timey country down home red state update podcast and them. Coming to you from a bunker underneath Jackie's Market in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And here they are, both of them. Hey, Shaggy Bro. And I'm Dunlap. I'm... Welcome to the Red State Update Podcast, everyone. Yeah. I hope you all had a great week. Yeah. Personally. Oh, yeah. And freedom-wise. I hope you enjoyed all your constitutional freedoms. What what we got left, enjoy them while you got them. That's what I say. I hope you went out and shot something. Ate something fatty. And praised the Lord. That was your... We were not invited to CPAC, and we also we couldn't afford to go. And that was what Dunlap was going to have. We could do a be. Kickstarter. That was going to stay over with now, hell. Isn't it? To 2014. Well, I, I don't know. But you think they'd let us do a panel at CPAC? I don't know. I don't know. I I wouldn't mind going there and having some fellowship with my fellow conservatives. I wouldn't bother me. That Who much. runs CPAC? They always like, oh, they they got the wrong people coming to CPAC. CPAC chose the wrong people. If they want to win an election, they need to get this kind of person. They need to haul Chris Christie in there. All yeah. of them. Don't nobody Grab a wanna, lapel. Don't nobody want to be in a room with Chris Christie. Why do you say that? He could be the great white. Hope is that racist? I don't know these days. You, can, I don't know what to say anymore. I was honestly going. I, think, I just talk because he's so fat. I don't like looking at people that big. I don't, Jackie. I mean, it's hard enough to sit here Jackie. with you. You, you ain't that big. You ain't that big. Something about it, I don't like. I just don't like it. You junior samples. I listen to him most time. I know he's on hee haw, but I listen to all his records. Lolo Roman. Well, Lulu. But not Chris Chris. Something about him, and it's Lulu. They were comfortable with themselves. He's always got a, a suit on that tight. I don't <laughs> mean to be. He looked like just a ball and wrapped up in a. I don't know. I don't. It makes me uncomfortable. He does. I've never seen. And granted, I ain't been in the same room with Lulu Roman except that once. But didn't see Lulu Roman? Nobody ever asked her any questions about her weight, did they? Like everywhere he goes, he says, I shut my to deal with and I'm trying my best and that just makes it worse. It's just like yeah. Yeah, why yeah, nobody ever was like, Junior Samples, what are you gonna do about your weight problem? No one would ask him that, so you don't think about it when you think of him. I know these are big people, but with him every time a reporter gets to him it's like, What are you gonna do? But you know he yeah. says, Yeah, I, I it's some it's an issue and then you have to sit there and look at him, and it's it's just pitiful, Sweating. miserable. Yeah, I never seen Lulu Roman sweat. I guarantee you, if he sat down to every interview and sat there and just had a turkey leg or something eating on it, they wouldn't. Why well, ask him that question? You know, they wouldn't do it. Why? Because he obviously doesn't care. That's yeah, because he's comfortable. When you're comfortable with yourself, everybody comfortable with you. It, he he don't. If he sat down to an interview with a turkey leg, everybody would draw him like England King, a fat one with had the turkey leg on the I, top. They, he'd look like he's going to the Ren Fair. If you're big like that, all I'm saying, just own it. Just it's it's you, you know. It's that's who you are. It's big people, skinny people, little people. But him, he just he looks uncomfortable physically, and I don't like you know big people in general. You just feel bad for them because they're going you know they ain't gonna be around too long. Well, I guess that's what the reporters are hinting at, is like if you get in the Oval Office, are you going to keel over on a desk going over a report because of all the pastrami? Well, if he did that, it wouldn't be near as bad as anything Obama done. That's how I'd answer that question. He'd be star seat back right now up on the stage. So he should get up there and go, I'm fat and I could die, but I still would be a better president than Obama. And he'd win them all over. I guarantee him tell you. Think about that. 
But go on, you early you was doing your speech. D- Dunlap wrote a speech. A oh, CPAC. You my were, CPAC you, speech. You were in the middle of it there, and I... Everybody, okay, please sit down. Thank you, thank you. What? Just, no, just... Seriously, folks, this is... I've got to start my speech. You're going to play the Jaws music if you don't... Okay, please be seated, everyone. Please just take a seat. Thank you, you, thank doing? you, seriously. Quit being an idiot. If you want to... I Thank thought you. you had some good things to say about conservatives, and that's what CPAC's for. I thought you were going to say it on here. Just do it. Okay, if this was my CPAC speech, I'd have security throw your ass the fuck out. Oh, hell. Watch your mouth. I, never mind. Why the hell was I trying to encourage you to do anything? That's what your speech would be, is watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. The, the I Jackie Brawls tell- panel on cursing, because that's the biggest issue. Well... I don't want to have to hear it, and most people I would say probably <laughs> agree with me at CPAC. Don't Actually, have to hear that kind of language all the damn time. I think that was CPAC's motto this year is, I don't want to hear it. I think that's what they, that was on the banner out front. Well. Now, my speech would be, okay, who in here, by a show of hands, who's racist? What? I want to talk to. No, that's. Everybody that's racist, here's how you can figure out who's racist. Here's how I do it, because you can't just ask them that. I would start a sing-along. I'd get a karaoke machine, and I'd turn it to Elvira. And I'd what be like... What the hell are you talking okay, about? Okay, everybody, everybody sing, Elvira. And then I'd say, okay, now just the ladies. And the ladies would sing, okay, over here, I want just just the fellas to sing the umpas. And the fellas do it, and I'd go, okay, now the racist, just the racist. And whoever sung, I'd say, look, um, you're hurting the party. I'd, music would stop. I'd rig it up where they'd be a should, record should scratch. And alert about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass. I'd say, okay, everybody, we're going to have a crash course in race relations today at CPAC. We're going to learn. At least you trying to help them. You ain't trying to. To everybody's racist, you know, at least you go yeah, out of your I'm way to set them straight. Yeah. Everybody at CPAC is racist no, or every Republican either. is I racist. I know that, but there are some racists. There, there's racist and all yeah. sorts of, is it more racist to be a Democrat and give out the welfare checks and elect a black president? Or is it more racist to be a Republican? I mean, clearly, they're, they're racist policies. May win them elections, but it ain't gonna get them into heaven. And if you're a racist Republican, you you've got to sit down and figure out. Like, are you racist? Like, I hate all black people. Or are you racist? Like, if you go to pick up your pizza at Domino's and there's a black family in line ahead of you, you think real quick to yourself, ah, oh, this part of town's really going downhill. And you're like, no, that ain't right. Is that one racist thought make you a racist? Plus, you should be eating Papa John's anyway, because he hates Obama. Well, it's different levels. Yes, yeah, different levels. Some races should be treated in a different way, like you said, trying to help somebody out, trying to see people help them see the error of their ways. Like, instead of just pointing your finger at them, because yeah, you were sitting there saying, y'all go to this room instead of just pointing your finger and going, racist, racist, racist. No, I want to talk to them and learn how their racism can help us Teach black people how to be better citizens. Well, that, among other things. Right. Now, they're still racist. That, but, you but know. what do they bring to the table that yeah. we can use to help us get into the White House next time? What lessons can be learned from their race? Can you, like, pour their racism into, like, a colander and sift out the racism but drain the good ideas keep, into a keep, big jug? Keep the enthusiasm. Keep the enth- Drain the enthusiasm away from the hating black people. There you go. Put that in a jug. Put it to good use. Drink maybe, it. Maybe we'll win some elections, yeah. Drinking the Kool-Aid, that's racist when people say, oh, you drink Obama's Kool-Aid. Yeah. Who drinks Kool Aid? Racists go both ways. Always said that. Always will. And we and we're we're being here to talk about CPAC being good conservatives, and we're we're talking about some of the bad apples we have, and we're going to own up to it. I wouldn't I wouldn't see you ever see no Democrat doing that. Never. Yeah, no, Democrats would never admit they got racists in their party. Never would. 
We, sure, we have a few bad apples. There's always a bad apple. You can't control, they say the country's split in half, you ain't gonna say, well, most of it's good and bad. I mean, yeah, most of it. But then there's small pockets in the good that's really bad, and you gotta help it be good again. What? What? This was my speech I was gonna give there. I told you not to do the pockets thing. I thought there's, if there's a pocket of this and a pocket of that. And where that's where you put the apples. Well, I was going to get to that part, but you just... Oh, hell, never mind. Well, go on. Go on with your speech, then. That was pretty much it. I was just trying to talk, you know, everybody act right, and like I was saying, enthusiasm, and everybody just, you know, keep your head on straight, and we're going to listen to the same stuff we already heard, but we're going to listen to it again till, till we learn how to do it, learn how to make it work. Oh, so you saying having the, the same people at CPAC that lost the election last time, it's not because they're bad. We just didn't listen to them right. Did nobody listen to them right? Of course, we had Mitt Romney. He talked. He gave a good talk. I, I, well, I honestly don't know how to listen to that man right. It goes both ways sometimes for me. I don't know how to. I, that's something I'm, see, I'm putting fault upon myself. There's some things that I don't know how to do yet. Like listen to Mitt Romney. I, I, the right way, whatever that is. To where he makes sense or inspires something in you? or I guess inspiration. Makes you not want to turn the channel? Makes you want to vote for him? That's it right there, yeah. He gave a speech. He said, I'm, I'm, I may not be your leader, but I want to be working side by side, shoulder to shoulder with you. Do you imagine your shoulder touching Mitt Romney's? I don't see it happening. I just I never. You down in a ditch somewhere digging? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Don't mean he's all bad. It just he wasn't the right fella to run, in my opinion. That just wasn't he wasn't it. Yeah, but people liked him. People give his speech good marks. They said well, he gave. He said they said this was kind of his official concession speech this seemed more like his concession speech because last time he thought he was going to win up until they come in and said hey you lost yeah sorry yeah so he didn't have a speech so he just kind of came out there and mad talked yeah and he mad talked and had to act like he was uh conciliatory yeah. which you can't do when you mad no i reckon not no not if you haven't had any time to work up to it. I mean, my impression, the way they talk about it, was like he was in his dressing room having whatever Mormons drink instead of champagne to celebrate. And then somebody, like, literally in there going, like, to yeah. us. And Ju- then somebody's juice. like, yeah, something like that. Juice. Juicy juice, yeah. maybe. And somebody, just a hand reaches out from a curtain and yanks him on stage. It's like, you lost, go. And then he had to give his speech. Yeah. So he wasn't, have- wasn't planning on. Giving on that one, no, he wouldn't. Hey, but you know, he had time now. Think about everything he did wrong. And, yeah, he talked real good. Yeah. And Coulter up there, she must not like looking at fat people either, because she said Chris Christie is off her list. Now I wasn't. I think that's for different reasons. Now I don't see why all Republicans all have to agree on everything, right? Like for instance, that like we were talking about earlier, a bunch of racist Republicans. I don't agree with them, but they're still in my party, and we need to come together. It's because you got a racist grandma or uncle. Everybody's or got one of them. Mailman. Everybody got one of them. You can't not take your mail just because the mailman's racist. That's you right. St- you need your mail. That's right. Make a statement, do whatever, try to be a big person, whatever. But you going to read that mail. Can you imagine if your mailman come to the door with your catalog every every week? and like, I have never seen so many Hispanics. What is going on around here? And you had to, just every time you wanted, you ordered something off of eBay. He's like, yeah. what is, with the rap music and the pants? You just nod politely, take your mail, uh-huh. Go on about your business. Huh? Just shut, tune out on that stuff. Everybody does, you got to. Get through, get through the day, you got to tune out on things. Well, you got to get your mail, and, and you got to get them votes. Yeah. Somehow, the Republicans have to get, Black people's votes and racist votes at the same time. That's impossible. 
That is a, a hard... It's a tough road, road to hoe. It is. It, but it, Cause that's basically what everybody's saying, right? Everybody's like, oh, we have to be more inclusive. Somehow the Republicans have to figure out how to break through. Now there's black Republicans. Now, now don't you say that like it, it, it just impossible Right, though. but Republicans like the black Republicans because their idea of a black person is kind of mixed up with them taking welfare. They think all black people take welfare. So if you get a black person in there, it's like, I don't think black people should take welfare. That may They may not qualify as a black person to a Republican. Like if they hate other black people enough, then maybe black, they don't count as black in Republican eyes. I don't eyes. know if anybody hates anybody else because whatever. I don't, I don't know about that. They're just saying... Like, Republicans, we hate a lot of Democrats because they give all the money to our money to black people, right? And then also, uh, dem- black people, Democrats, or Democra- Democrats what? and black people, it's all mixed up together in Republicans' eyes. It's, what, it's all, what are you talking about mixed up in the eyes? It's just like they hate... It's it's all race. It's all money. Everybody hates each other. They taking all the money. Well, that's the, just that's a terrible way to look at it, right there. That's what know? it is. Well, that's what it is. That guy who that. wants segregation, what does he want segregation for? So that they don't, they have their own country. There was a guy at CPAC who's who. I don't even know how to start explaining this. If you wow. hadn't read this in the news, there was a panel at CPAC where they were discussing uh, race. Like, as a Republican, if somebody calls you a racist just because you're a Republican, it was how to trump them. And you, and the guy giving a talk, who was an African-American Republican, yeah. said you trump it by saying you're a, a Frederick Douglass Republican. Well, I seen this where the fella got st- stood up, got on right. man, yeah. So I, this guy was talking about history and talking about Frederick Douglass, which I'm sure was a lot of people were nodding off. So I mean, if for the people in that room, they probably should be grateful that all the racist stuff happened. If like Ann Coulter's talking and you're in there with this thing, I'd be mad. I'd, I I want to hear her bash what fatty. We want to hear, yeah. Not fatty, it just it's Obama. theater, right? But uh, nobody wants to go CPAC to learn a history lesson. No. I mean, like a history lesson where, like, you know, Franklin Roosevelt was working with the Nazis. Those kind of good history lessons. Not like, let me tell you who Frederick Douglass was. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. So this dude stood up and and he said, what about, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically was like, what just about, what about segregation? That could work, right? He said, uh, united like a fist, but with separate fingers. Like, yeah. a, like you're wearing a glove instead of a mitten. Yeah. I added the mitten part. Seems like he went out of his way to get to the, the Frederick Douglass room. Well, where else are you going to say that? Well, they were, yeah. Where that's really is like, where can I bring up segregation? I don't know. At CPAC, there may be a lot of panels where you can bring it up. I I was wondering, is I ain't never been. Is it like that Comic Con thing you took me to? It's different. See, here's a Frederick Douglass room. Here's this room. You just walk around, and go to all those. Hey, we're gonna talk about you know, Croft Super Show in this room, and over I here mean, we're gonna talk about Justice League, and here you can draw anime. Here's for your wood, yeah. woodpecker statues, and here's for segregation. Now, somebody, you know, somebody may have said something awful in that Frederick Douglass room, but if they got it, if they're offering all that, he just should be glad anybody showed up at all in there. He should be. Yeah. He said, well, I, I was hoping nobody was going to mention segregation, but, you know. You, ca- you kind of asking for it if you're sitting up. We kind of yeah. had a lively, dis- at least we got a discussion. Yeah. There was participation. And so now... Republicans are mad saying the liberal media is making it look like everybody at CPAC is racist when it was just this one guy. It's just one fella in the Frederick Douglass uh, 
speech that said this. It ain't everybody there. Didn't they say the good doctor up there on stage? Yeah, Dr. Uh, what's his name? Dr. Carson? Is his name Carson? Yeah, I think yes, he is. African-American doctor. He, I call him a good doctor. That's what I call him. That's my name for him. He's teasing the crowd about being president. Well, like, what if I was in the White House in 2016? Right. Everybody's like, yay, here's a black doctor who hates Obamacare. Yep. He's a doctor. He knows about that stuff. That's what's different. That's what's different right there. He's a doctor. He knows how horrible wrong it is. It ain't because he's black, it's because he's a doctor. Is he Republicans' favorite doctor now? Well, he sure is mine. Would, did you like him more than your doctor? You don't even go to the doctor. If he it. was your doctor, I bet you'd go. Well, whoever that fellow was pulled that thing out of my ears last time I went to a doctor, and he wasn't a doctor. So no. I, 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 he I, was Hispanic, though. He was. Wouldn't it be funny if you had a, a Mexican doctor and a black doctor? Why would you need two? Well, just so you wouldn't appear racist. Oh, hell. That's what it's come to. You know, I don't want to. Three There's or people, four doctors. It goes both ways. That's what I keep saying. Everybody says all this terrible stuff happened at CPAC. Well, you think that's the only place? That's just where Canberra was? How many racist things do you think were said that day all over the world? Probably anywhere people were talking about Frederick Douglass. The only place, the only Frederick Douglass room I've been to was I went to a strip club in Talladega, and they had a Frederick Douglass room. But it wasn't really so much about history. It was just if you liked black chicks. Oh, I don't want it. But nobody was talking about segregation in there. Look, I, I lived through some of this stuff they were talking about, and then there were terrible times. Ain't no things. Maybe you need to talk to Segregation Boy and tell him that, you know, all Republicans don't want segregation. Well, that's true. We, you know, we tried it back in. It evidently wasn't working. Well, well, I don't think it was just something we tried out. It wasn't like a theory we had. That's pretty well, much we had like, it, and we didn't have it, is what I'm saying. And it, they, it was uh, wrong. Experiment. It was wrong. It wasn't working or whatever. And we changed it, and now things are better. I know. That's what I'm trying to say. So there was a whole segregation thing. You see, like the month, like Democrats and black people, like the they think uh, that Democrats are taking the month, black people taking our money and giving it to black people. They hate Democrats for that, and then they hate black people because they're Democrats. So it all blurs together in one thing. It's still not clicking. Okay. Right. Wayne Lapierre talked. Yeah. I say, hey, back point there, Wayne, Wayne Lapierre, right? We. Uh, who who are you more mad at in today's world? Somebody says something that's racist or something. What do you if you had to do one of these two things? Answer me quick question. I'm asking everybody out there. All right. Listen to somebody say something racist. Uh huh. Or look at pictures of dead children. What if the children were minorities and people said racist things about the them? children are mixed up? It's all different things. That ain't got nothing to do with it. So you're talking about Michael Moore wants to show. That's right. The Republicans are getting all this heat for this this fella, one fella out of a CPAC. How many people are CPAC? I've been lost of people here. Forty. Seat. They're more than that hell. But then in the in the news, the only place you can hear, you know, I don't mean to get on Fox's side or good or bad or something. They're the only people talking about that. Michael Moore wanting to show everybody that Sandy Hook pictures. Beautiful. He says if you saw the pictures, that everybody would change their mind on gun control. Hell. I don't know. But Wayne LaPierre. I don't know about that. He's up there going like, they call me crazy, you're crazy. Well, yeah. And then Michael Moore wanting to show pictures of dead kids. Crazy. How's that going to help anything? Ain't going to help nothing. Well, like. Just make everybody feel awful. We already feel awful. Would you look at them? Hell no, I ain't going to look at that. Well, then you ain't going to feel awful. Well. The only person looking at them would be, I guess that's how Michael Moore gets his kicks, by looking at pictures of dead kids. Or eating, going through fast food. That's enough, food. fellas. See, now, I don't like Michael Moore for a lot of reasons. Michael Moore, I, I, I could be here for the next, this this park is going on for the next eight hours. I've just talked about things I don't like about Michael Moore. But one of them is, 
ain't, ain't one is him being fat. You do, it doesn't bother you that Michael Moore's fat. Oh, sure. But he's always wearing a lot of clothes, like big. See, he dresses. He wears, he wears appropriate clothes. Lulu wrote, wore a big mumu, and then, and, and, you know, Michael Moore, a big coat, that sort of thing. Cover it up. Right. Uh, Chris Christie, little boy's clothes on, big big baseball, round ball. Don't look right. If you're going to be on TV, cover yourself up. Show some shame. Nobody wants to see. Now, but, I like, I don't mean to sit there say anything bad about him personally outside of that. He got some good ideas. He's doing some things there. And he Chris does some Christie, things I don't like. But he hugged Obama. Well, it, when a person is distraught and a lot has happened to you, you hug anybody. You will. You just sad and wore out and just, I just, I need attention, anything. It don't matter who walk up to you. Man, I've been through a lot. You don't. So if you let's say your store burned down, and not everybody, I just saying I understand it. Me personally, no. But hell let's no. say there was a tornado that it come through and oh, it knocked your store down, and then you know killed all your family, and also you were the governor, and then Obama shows up. He's like, Jackie, let me give you a hug. Come here. Would you take it? Would you take it? I, if I was that distraught, and, and Lord, I hope that never happens to me or anybody listening to this, I, I, I just might do it. I might just need a hug. Nobody else offered to do it, and as a first person, you've been holding it in that long. Was Obama, you know nobody else wanted to hug Chris Christie. Obama was the first person to offer to hug Chris Christie in his life? I don't know about his whole life, but listen, it's been a while. I'll say that much. I didn't know that. Well, think that about it that way. Have a breakthrough moment for him. Yeah. So what if what if Hitler showed up and you needed a hug? Oh hell. Would you hug Hitler? All right. If I did know If you didn't know who Hitler was, thought you just had a weird mustache. Be- I I'll say this right now, and I don't mean to sound this come out wrong. If I was distraught in, in, in a place like that, I'd have trouble hugging anybody with an accent. That I don't understand because I don't know what Obama speak English at least I, I know he speaks very well. Second language. Yeah. So let's see. We talked about uh, we got into some dicey areas with race and dead children. What else you want to talk about, Jackie? I saw something besides that. They, the news does that all this is the a good time. Podcast. Why do we need to? It's terrible. I don't like talking about all this stuff. It's things in the world that happen. I mean, I... Speaking of people with accents you don't understand, we got a new pope. Oh, yeah. Pope up there. He likes poor people. He rode the bus. Pope Francis. Yeah. He ain't got to do that no more. Nope. He'll get a big, fancy new bus. Yeah. Take everybody in Vatican City. Which I used to live in a little old hovel, hole somewhere, apartment. What is it? He had a little, uh, I guess he lived in a little apartment with a yeah. little stove. Got a big house now, don't he? Got on a bus. Got probably the biggest house in the world next to heaven. Yeah. He hates gay people. Sure does, yeah. Doesn't, he doesn't like gay people getting married. Some people thought, oh, maybe we're going to get a, a, a crazy pope. Going to let priests get married. Say gay marriage is okay. Oh, I ain't going to do that hell. No. They wouldn't even be the Pope at that point. I mean, what's the point of having a Pope? Pope is everything opposite of that, you know. It ain't none of that. I mean, out in the open. What, in private, what do you have? I saw, I seen the Vince Code, all sorts of crazy stuff goes on back behind it. I don't know, it's crazy. But he likes poor people, though. He does like poor people, supposedly. People thinking this Pope's going to be all for the poor people, helping yeah. them out. They're going to they gonna miss him now. He's gone. Selling the riches of the Vatican. Well. No, he's going to do it from, from the Vatican. He's going to help poor people. I don't know how you do that, but all right. He was, in, well, it ain't our job to figure it out. We ain't Catholic. I ain't Catholic. about to try to figure out Catholic stuff. And I know this, but I, that stuff's crazy to me. Does anybody listen to the Pope? 
I mean, if he gets up there and's like, I like gay people now. Pope. Jesus told me to say that. Yeah, Pope is the same thing as like Queen of England to me. You see, they, it's on the TV all the damn time, and you're looking at it, but it, you know, whenever they, you know, get a new one, but I, it don't affect me no which way at all. Just well, like people dressing up pretty robes, pretty dresses. That's about it. So it's kind of like a red carpet at the Oscars. It, it, it's the same thing to me. All that means about the same thing. But if a queen of England, if she got up there and said, I command everyone to stop going out on Tuesday nights, nobody would do it. They don't have to listen to what the I queen says. Nobody. Do you think like you say it, anybody do what the Pope says? I don't know anybody. I don't even know. I know Catholic people don't do half the stuff a Pope says. Do they even listen to? Do they? How do you know what the Pope says? I, hell, I don't know. I, you see him take the job and he goes inside, I, and next time you see him, he's in that little car riding around. I don't know. But like, let's say the Pope was like, you know what? I do like gay people. Like, how would everybody get the? Is there a newsletter? I even mean, if a Pope did say that, let's say he said that one night in the Vatican. Yeah, just that's talking. Not like yeah, having dinner. Is that gonna get out? How many of them in there to hold him up? Kill him. How many? Replace got, him with the devil. First, got to go through what the, them cardinals, they're the closest to him. Yeah. And then after that, you're just the, the priest. Mm-hmm. And it keeps going, I guess. Off boys. The layers of protection. Too many layers of, for, for me, personally. Now, yeah. Southern Baptists, many evangelical faiths, denominations... Not religions. Bill O'Reilly says it's different religions, right? Like like Methodist and Church of Christ. Is, that's different. Would be a different he, religion. He, also, he said Christianity ain't a religion either. Right. Re- those are the religions. Christianity is just a way of looking at things. He, yeah, he said. Yeah. So if you Southern Baptist, that's your religion. But Christianity is just sort of like. Well, I kind of almost agree like there's. I'm Southern Baptist, and, and you know I ain't Catholic. Now, and see, when I heard preachers growing up talking back when I used to go to church and back when they were more open about how much they hated Catholics, they'd say one of the differences was Jesus talks to you. You have a personal relationship That's with right. Jesus Christ. I ain't got to go talk to no man dressed up funny to give him a message to the Lord. In a closet. Like, yeah. gee, you can just that, say, that, That's encouraging bad things right there. As much trouble as that church gets into, just the whole setup of it doesn't seem like it's just built to something to go wrong. What do you mean? Encouraging kids to go little whisper? Little boy go in the closet with a man in a dress. Tell him, tell him your worst secrets. I, I, no. There's nothing about that that's right. That's Catholic bashing, Jackie, and this is America. I don't mean to, I, they can do it. Well, they do do it, it, but you know how many times they arrest these fellas, and I know there's people in other churches that do bad stuff too. I don't mean to, but I I don't. Well, you know, and I I hate to be a Catholic basher, well, but when the, here's a difference between a priest and a preacher, like like we would go to Jackie he goes here a preacher. Yep. Now a priest when he's talking and he gets to thinking about having sex with little boys. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He has to have sex with little boys. Oh. But when a preacher starts thinking about having sex with little boys, he can go home and have sex with his wife. So oh. there's a safety valve. You tell man he can't have his that sort of thing with anybody, gonna go crazy. What you can't say sex? I sex, sex, all right. Why you gotta hear it for? I wish you hadn't said it now. Well gross me out. Sorry everybody. I I shouldn't have forced him into it. All right. So, new pope from Argentina. Yeah, that that's that's after today this weekend. Whatever, nobody gonna remember that. But it's good they got. Well, that makes them happy. I, you know, I don't mean to. You said Catholic bashing. I died. I'm sorry if I come off that way, but. Uh, when they change things up, you know, like if you see them make... How is it changed up? It's just another man. No, it's the same thing, but it still bothers you a little bit. Like when you watch, uh, I don't know if you watch his, like Saturday morning cartoons, like when I was growing up and they'd have the McDonald's commercials on there and then they'd have a new Ronald McDonald every few years. And it was just like, oh, that's kind of different. You, but you know it's the same well, at you McDonald's. Get, you get used to it after a while. Yeah. And, and then, eventually you grow up and don't give a damn. 
Why didn't they get a young pope? I mean, this dude's 70-something. I say it's something to do with Vichko. Old man can't get in as much trouble as a young man can, if you know what I'm saying. That's what Vince called. They were singing in that movie. Why did you ever watch that? I don't know. I thought it was something else. I'll say that right now. You have night. What well, you tell me the other night? You woke up having Da Vinci Code nightmares. I seen it. I, it's been how many years now? Probably because of all this Pope stuff. I say that white old bino coming at me. How'd you ever get back to sleep? I, I, it's, it's hard sometimes. I tell you that right now. And then once it wakes you up like that, you're scared. Then your mind starts trying to figure out that Vinci Code. You up all damn night. Psychological yeah. torture. Yeah, that's what they people pay for it. So, okay, let's apologize to CPAC, Republicans, Democrats, black people, uh, Hispanic people, male men, the NRA, fat people, uh, Ann Coulter, dead children, Catholics, the Pope, and uh, evangelical ministers. Yeah, if we said anything we shouldn't have, we... Uh... Sure do. Apologize for it. Sorry. Sorry about that. No. Uh, I guess that's probably about it, Jackie. Unless here's... Let me get this out. With the Captain D's. Wrote oh, down yeah. the, I like to get my thoughts together over some slaw. When'd you go with Captain D's? I'm my way over here. Well, you could have picked some up for me. Why didn't you call me take on Captain D's? I love Captain D's. This is Jackie and Dunlap time. When I'm at Captain D's, that's Dunlap well, you can solo. still have it there and bring me home something to... Just bring it over here to work for me. I had a lot of complicated thoughts on race and the Republican oh, Party hell. I needed to untangle. If you go about, you could have just got me some chicken strips. Well, we can go back. Now. I'll go back oh, right now. Never mind, never mind now. I don't, I mean, I don't, seriously. Never I'll, mind now, you already, but you already went there and ate. Come here, didn't even call me. I ain't hungry now, I was hungry then. I just needed to think for a second, well, but I'm always up obviously for Obviously, you want to think about me. I'm always up for a trip to Captain D's. Oh. I'm sorry, Jackie. Seriously, I'll run out there. You keep talking. You can talk about Rob Portman's gay son or North Korea, and then I'll be back in Why 10 minutes. Why would I want to talk about either one of those things? Rob Portman was a Ohio, what is he, senator, congressman? Senator, I think, oh, I, he, he didn't like gay marriage. Now he... I was going to do some research at Captain D's now. They didn't have their Wi-Fi well, you should have just, you could have brought them home. Meal number four or five. Anyway, he had a gay son, and he was against gay marriage, and then he's like, you know what, I since I got a gay son, I'm for gay marriage. Everybody got, you know, somebody in the family that way. I mean, that's why it's going to happen one of these days. Nothing you can do about it. A lot of... I uh, got my reservations. That's because things I read in a good book, I don't mean that I'd like gay people just fine. What'd you read in a good book that was against gays? Just I, different parts of it. I can't remember. Hell, but anyway, I'm, it's going. It's just going to go that way. That's reading. He, you know, I don't know if it's so much about his his boy. Or him see, just they, they. You know, he could have been one to say, "You go ahead and try it. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's watch you go down." You know, they all play what are you talking out. about? I'm talking about you know they oh, going try have, floating it out. To, exactly. I thought you meant try being gay. No, he, his boy's gay. They know that about him, but like, a, a, you know, CPAC can't come. Ain't nobody going to be a CPAC. So he, they wouldn't let the gay they, people come. That's right. Told them to, to come CPAC. out. So, but you notice this is going on at the same time. CPAC going on is what I'm saying. Yeah, why ain't people mad about that? CPAC said gay people are not allowed. I'll tell you this, too. The thing about Catholics and preachers, like, if you're like, what did I read in the Bible that says gay people are going to hell? I can't remember. You could just go ask your priest when you go to confession. But, like, if you go to a regular church, you have to call your preacher up and bother him while he, he could be having sex with his wife. Oh. All right. At least you have regular times to talk to you. Well, priest. I don't read the good book as uh, much as I should. I'll be the first one to say it, but I just know what's in there somewhere. So, Rob Portman. Loves his gay son so much yeah, good for him, yeah. that he has ruined his career as a Republican senator. But some pro-gay marriage people are saying that, you know, why? Oh, because his son's gay. That's great. 
you love your gay son. But what about before when it was other people's sons? It ain't, he can't love everybody. Good Lord. It's bad enough he had to learn to deal with his own, for him, I mean. He had to love his son. Yeah. That took a lot. That took a lot for him to go through that and come out and say what he did. But he can't go out loving every everybody, your boy, just because he's gay. How many parents out there, you can't do it yourself. You can't put it on old Portman. The Bible, I think, says to love everybody, though. Well, Jesus said it. Yeah, he said that. Why'd you say it like that? Like, oh, crazy Jesus. I didn't mean it that way at all. I'm just saying, obviously, Jesus said that. Now, you're talking saying. about Jesus like he's a pope. Like, he said a bunch of stuff, and we're like, ah, whatever. No, I knew what Jesus said. Jesus said, love the love enemy, love everybody, and I know what he said. You know, the times were different back then, but it, Do you it think still rings true. If there were gay people in Bible times, he I, would have said it differently? No, I'm just saying... I don't mean it that way at all. I like gay people just fine. I got, you know, like I said, everybody got gay somebody in you. I got a niece or a nephew, something like that. I don't know. But I, you know, I love them just like everybody yeah. else. they just the way they are. You don't care about gay people getting married. You don't think it's right, but you think they should be able to. I, at this point, it's, I've already, like, give up on it. I don't see what the fight's for at this point. I know some people going to disagree with me, at, but I just, you know, it's there's a lot of things that, Jesus don't like in this world. I tell you that right now, but I mean. Like what, do you think? The Oz movie? Man, nobody in their right mind like that. If Jesus come back, he wouldn't go see that. Hell. Do you think if Jesus did come back and had time to go to the movies, if he would need oh. the 3D glasses, or do you think he could just do it himself? He might be able to do it I for the whole know. auditorium. I don't know. Hell. I can't. They, no Jesus I believe in would go say, "Oh, it's the humongous and wonderful." Well, that's the, probably disrespectful. Somebody saying something more powerful than him, wizard or witches and stuff. That, yeah. that don't go together with Jesus. He's the only one. He's and, the greatest wizard there ever was. There wasn't no other ones. It was him. And other people talk that way about that. You know, that ain't real. Be like when he's in the temple, turn that table over. He turn that table over where they give you your 3D glasses. They go flying everywhere. Yeah, he wouldn't go no movie. He'd have other things to do. What if he can't wanted to preach to people coming out of the movies? Because that's where you can get a crowd. Well, he'd be outside of it. He wouldn't go in. Yeah, you ever go to the movies? With some crazy person outside, homeless. Hey, you got any money? Hey, you got any popcorn left? Well, I try not, not to go to those. There's better theaters than that. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I go to theaters where security runs them off. Yep. Trying to go out and escape from the world. I want to go see a movie. Get my mind off of things. I don't need it up in my face. So I guess we need to apologize to the makers of Oz and probably a lot of of Christians. Uh, North Korea, anything? Hey, crazy as hell. Somebody else crazy as hell. This one got missiles, you know. Now, tell me the truth. Everybody watching this Pope and stuff, everybody likes that. If a Pope had nuclear missiles, how would people feel about him? It'd be different, wouldn't it? Well, is he threatening them, threatening us with them, or is he just No, like, he kind of do. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Ain't that, ain't that the Pope's job? So, wait. If he, if he was telling you not to use contraceptive and he had these nuclear missiles... How are people going to respond to that? That's what I'm just saying. Thank goodness it ain't that way, but that's why I'm saying North Korea is something to worry about. If a pope said don't use contraceptives, I got a nuclear weapon, I would totally bear rug it. 